A lot of pushing and shoving going on, as you can see. Umpires just waiting for the timekeepers to give them the go-ahead to start the match. Geelong coming back after that disaster against Port Adelaide. Today going for four in a row. Umpire throws the ball in the air. It's very muddy, as Dipper said. Kilpatrick on a McKinnon. He gets ridden into the ground. So the first man to get mud on the jumper, the former Crow, Marty McKinnon. The umpire still throwing it up, so we'll see a fair bit of that this afternoon. Sydney in great form last week, McKinnon again, out of the congestion, kicks towards half forward, no mark taken down there. Opportunity for Seymour to give the hand pass away onto O'Loughlin. Maxfield needs a good gather, too quick for King. Maxfield kicks up towards half forward. No mark taken. There's Graham in trouble down there. Oh, McGrath, big hip and shoulder. Plenty of weight being used in the packs. A real wet and muddy day. Old fashioned footy. And the umpire's going to come in and ball it up just outside the 50 metre line. There's mud in your eye. And Paul Kelly. Who else would it be, Robert? Oh, he's a tough little nut, isn't he? Mm. Paul Kelly, great captain and a great player. Knocked forward. But taken by Sanderson. Sanderson for Geelong back towards the centre of the ground. It's just going to sit in that area by the look of it with the umpire just prepared to throw the ball in the air. Hand pass by O'Brien to Maxfield. Maxfield off the left foot into the pocket. Graham and Lockett. Well done by Graham but Lockett kept having a go at it. No, there should have been left. a free kick. The umpire's Hand pass for Cardi. Advantage for Pickering. Free kick hoop to Scotty. Did you see the player Graham, that he was infringed against? Yeah, lock it, lock it, grab Graham by the jumper. OK, play goes on and the ball is at half forward, left, for Geelong. Mansfield's got it, somehow he's able to spin out of trouble. Gee, that was a bit too easy. He's kicking towards full forward. Gary Hocking's got it and will get the first goal of the game. Gary Hocking for the Cats. That was a great getter, one-handed. And actually, Mansfield did that very, very easily. The way to get back onto his right or his left foot. Now, he is a dominant, he's normally a left foot kick, but to be able to come back and spin like that really shows that there's not much pressure on there from the Sydney backs. He should have really been put under a lot more pressure, but great use of the body by Gary Hockey. O'Loughlin with Kilpatrick. Now, McKinnon. Long raking left foot inside 50, Brownless underneath it, Burns, kick six last week, the impossible one from there, oh just about holding the ball, good tackle from Nix, and he's been pinged. No, great effort by Nix, Burns so, is the live wire on the forward line, he's a leading goal kicker at Geelong. Burns three kicked, Nix is kicked, great right taken by Pickering. Great battle between Pickering and Creswell because both of them pick up a lot of positions. Swan's looking to get it out. Gee, that was almost a throw. Umpire lets it go. Picked up by Houlihan. Up and under. <laughs> 50 metre kick. 25 up and 25 down. So it went. McKinnon's been busy. Out of the left foot. Could go close to kicking it. That's close. Go umpire likes it. It's there. Two to the catch. This is exactly the way that Geelong started last week against Fremantle. They just did not allow Fremantle to get a sniff of the ball early on. There's a big fly by Mansfield. He upset the pack. And McKinnon on that left foot. He's put through his first. That's Geelong's second. And uh, the endeavour and the hardness of the ball for Geelong really evident early. 13 degrees here at Cadinia Park. 500th match played here on the ground. Creswell, who's been in great form. Lewis through his legs. Flipped out the front of the pack. Now a chance for Wharf. King gives it back to the skipper. Won't lose him any votes. The kick to half forward. McGrath does best in a tight contest. Onto the left foot. Kilpatrick. Geelong working it around. McGrath again. Taking the hand pass from Stoneham. This is Lee Colbert at halfback. To Houlihan. Through the mud. Still Houlihan. Too long for McKinnon. Ruse in the road. They go off the ground. They read Riccardi. Up to half forward. 
Dunkley, long hand pass. McKinnon's already hit or kicked, uh, kicked one goal. <laughs> now Hall inside 50, right foot snapshot is close, but not close enough. And Hall puts it through for the first behind of the day to the Cats. 2 1, Sydney get to score. So Geelong uh, kicked two very quick goals at the start of the match, but the Swans have settled down a little. They've been up as far as full forward in the uh, Tony Lockett area on one occasion. But uh, I repeat that uh, they are kicking into a little bit of a bruise. What do you think, Scotty? About three goals, maybe, by the look of the flags? Well, just looking at those flags, but uh, they're very deceptive, Geelong, because this is exactly how they started last week. We'll just have to wait until the second quarter to see what advantage there is. Bad error across the full back line. Riccardi gets it to Brownless. Brownless bangs away, and Big Billy's bobbed it through. Kadinia Park to their feet. That was a terrific kick and goal by Brownless. And Brownless really deep in that pocket. There's not much uh, daylight between those sticks. And when you put a kick up like that, you really are hoping. And uh, hope was rewarded as it went straight through the centre. So that is a confidence player, and that will give him a bit of confidence to go on with. Three quick goals to the Cats. If the ground like this, you'd think it may be a low-scoring affair. Geelong has other ideas. Lewis goes off the ground, only as far as Maxfield. Maxfield in front of King. Stoneham gets the bounce that he wanted. He's going to come across goal. Ball very muddy at the moment. Steinfurt. He'll go short. That's OK. Scholl. Scholl but half back. Peter, I'd just like to John, is it an adverse weather today? Uh, day? So in other words, will they change the ball every No, I don't quarter? think they will. Although the ground looks muddy, I don't think it's particularly tacky. It, the ball's not carrying much dirt around with it, so I'd say. And the jumpers still seem fairly good. Burns off the ground, and Burns has kicked it. Four goals to the Cats in a great start. Well, if that's the case, that ball not being, uh, not being an adverse weather day, Geelong really are taking advantage of the dry ball because the ground it is wet and this ball definitely will get heavier as the game goes on and they're taking reward and showing a lot of initiative getting in after that ball and Ronnie Burns, he's kicked 18 goals coming into this game, that's the 19th of the season, terrific strike rate, 19-7 for the year. Steinford knocks it on. Two Sydney players are there, Lachlan and Wharf. it comes to the latter, the former Fitzroy player. And there are many of those going around at the moment. Creswell kicks to the pocket, Lockett on the burst, Carey into goal, that'll be their first score, what is it, a minor one I think. Interesting that passage of play, Lockett came out, of the ball, out for the ball, I don't think he's fit, he's limping. There he is there, definitely favouring. And the, the other side, there's Gary Ayres on screen, was the mobility of Stephen Carey at centre-half forward. He's the big guy from Pennant Hills, homegrown talent, and really does show something. Graham with the win. You'd expect the long kick, and that's the way it's gone. Creswell roves it well. Hulahan a little bit late. Coex needed here. Lewis shows plenty. Spears the pass in. O'Brien on the end of it takes the mark right on 50. Decides to play on. Against the wind, is he too far out to score? Lockett pushing and shoving with Graham. King snaps, but misses one behind. Very lively. Clinton King, there he is on screen. His father, Derek, played at St Kilda. Only a few games at St Kilda, then went off to Oakley in the VFA, as it was known in those days. There's Rodney E. Scholl going down the ground. Kick a bit too emphatic there. Could have been a little bit better weighted. Taken away by Seymour, gets it out wide to Grant, who uses the ball pretty well. This is no exception, and gives the opportunity to Maxfield. King is at centre-half forward, but Maxfield goes long in the direction of Lockett. He's advantaged here by the breeze, but punched away by Graham. The ball spills to the front, and a real solid collision there between Lockett and Kilpatrick. Perhaps could have been a little bit more fierce. Maybe Plugger missing by centimetres. Barry Stoneham gets it down, Pickering quickly. A high kick towards the wing, punched away by Houlihan, back towards the centre, overrun by King, gathered by Scholl, tackle, well he shrugged the tackle from Wharf, 
and then confidently ran away and kicked the ball to Mansfield. Mansfield, who loves to set it up, kicks across and puts it on the chest brilliantly of Riccardi. It was a beautifully measured kick by Mansfield. Not too many centimetres there to spare. And he's put it with Riccardi, and Riccardi is within scoring distance. It's a good switch of play, wasn't it? From down half back, they changed direction. Then Mansfield, in turn, switched it and put the ball into space. And Riccardi couldn't help but take that chest mark. Well, a different looking Peter Riccardi with the shorter hair. But I'm sure his kicking ability at goal is no different. Well, he may have put it through as he know. It's hit the post. It reminds me one of Tony Polinelli that used to play on the wing down here at Geelong. He was a left footer, a real speedster, and he had a similar kicking style. One of their informed players of the year. Seven possessions already for Cresswell. Cresswell. Kicks to centre wing, hero of their win last year against Hawthorne when he took that mark over Holland in the goal square. And another ball up on centre wing. The other thing with Cresswell, when he first came across from Tasmania as a ruck rover, uh, he was a little overweight, but he's certainly worked on his fitness. You can see there's a real muscle definition in his arms. There he is on screen there. Ball hacked out of the pack. Up to Burns. Kelly. Oh, gee, he's done his knee. He's trying to put his knee in, Chris. Well, look at him banging his knee. Look. Dyson oh. Ruse. Mark taken by Shannon Grant. Oh, he's uh, luck. down in front of us here, in front of our commentary position. Lockett tries a balk. Looks for Maxfield. O'Loughlin. Good tackle from behind by Kilpatrick and Graham with a booming punt out of Stretches on, Peter. They'll have to stop the game. Yeah, I think uh, something's got to be done. The umpires, there's three of them. Don, why can't one of them see? Well, yeah, it's on the centre wing. stretcher on the ground. Right, they've, they've realised the stretcher's on the ground, but they wait until a passenger play stops because uh, unless it's going very, very close to the guy on the no, he's Well, now he's starting again, no. John. I mean, no, he doesn't know. Uh, yeah, well, he should know. Well, play goes on, but we have a serious situation with um, the unfortunate Darren Cresswell. Now, maybe the umpire might have seen what's going on. No. He's yes, the emergency's out. come out, isn't it? And he's made the uh, central umpire aware of the fact that maybe play has to be momentarily stopped. Cook is now on. We'll have a look at uh, Darren Cresswell. And... Uh, he has been a playmaker. Eight possessions, and there he is being taken from the ground. Unfortunately for Darren Creswell, he's popped his left uh, kneecap out, and uh, he's in a bit of pain at the moment. That's what he was trying to do, knock it back in. And the doctor tells me that uh, his right kneecap uh, has uh, come against that injury uh, only a couple of months ago. So he's in a bit of pain at the moment. But also... Uh, for John Russo, Troy Cook, the, the player who replaced uh, Creswell, came onto the ground without using the interchange uh, section. And there's a lot of complaints down at uh, the interchange bench. If Troy Cook comes off the ground, is he, is he allowed to go back on? If Troy Cook, well, he's got to go on through the interchange gate. Yeah, we Dippers. didn't, uh, John. Well, if so. he hasn't, then the interchange steward will have to report that and uh, the appropriate action will be taken. But he has to enter the ground through the interchange gate. And also keep an eye on Gary uh, Hockey, and he's uh, hurt his right shoulder um, in that first quarter, and he just hasn't been able to use his right shoulder properly, uh, Pete. Thanks, Dipper. Second quarter begins with a kick to Lewis, down to Lockett. Graham in front of him, he was grabbed. Sanderson goes for the boundary line, it eludes O'Brien, and will be thrown in right on 50. Not a bad kick against the breeze. Geelong with the numbers. Wharf, a little flip out. Chance for Sydney again. Kick comes up towards half forward. It came from Shannon Grant. The mark has been taken at half forward. Can Sydney get their first goal? This Don't worry a... about sw the Swans, Peter. I reckon this is definitely at least a three-goal breeze. Kinnear. A fair bit of play in the second part of the first quarter. Now, this youngster kicked 100 goals at Assumption last year. One of the great proving grounds for young Aussie footballers. That looks like a new ball, too. Mark Kinnear. 45 metres out. He's got the distance, OK. Mammoth kick. He's just hooked it a little bit, I think, and one behind. So Sydney's still goalless at the early part of the second quarter. Rodney Ede. I don't think he'd be too concerned yet. Four goals is not a huge margin, but I hope he gets Servo's in his place. Pete, this um, it's just the way that Sydney are playing. There's really nothing that, coming at all. That might me. concern him. Yeah, not, not so much the scoreboard. Ruse. Long kick. Shannon Grant on the end of it. A couple of attempts to mark. A little flip up gives it back to Ruse at right half back. 
Ruse tries a little short kick and it is effective. Riccardi was right on there to Orchard, but Orchard able to take the mark and run away. Backs himself, gets away from Derek Hall, kicks with the left foot across the ground. The big player, Stafford, beaten for it by McKinnon. McKinnon able to recover and then just kick with his left foot. McGrath knocked away by O'Loughlin. Well done, he gets it back. Cook, now Kelly running. Oh, look at that. Now there's definition for you. Go for goal, Paul Kelly. Hooks the kick and it's out of bounds in the left Lockett, forward pocket. Lockett playing up the ground and young Kinnear is playing in the square. Kinnear being picked up by uh, Stoneham. Stoneham earlier had Shannon Grant. Is this an unusual matchup maybe? Young Carl Steinford picking up Paul Kelly? Well, I thought that too. I watched that early just after half time, but uh, Stoneford obviously got it. Well, he can do the job, otherwise they wouldn't have put him there. Stoneham doing the ruck work up against Wharf. Kilpatrick does well. Can he break clear? And he does well in the finish. Kicks it in towards the centre. Pass King. Gatherers by Wharf. Oh. Tackled too high. And with great determination, got it to O'Loughlin. His kick slews off the side of his boot. Houlihan beaten for it now by Grant. Grant gets it to Orchard. Orchard goes to Stafford. In turn, back to Grant. Grant's kick towards Lockett. Too high. He can't jump, Lockett. At the back, Colbert goes straight past Maxfield. I don't think that uh, the coaching staff would have been too happy he's with that. He's Lockett. No, he's no good Cook. at all. He should be off the now ground. Now King, Maxfield, bomb it through. Go, Maxfield. And he gets the Swans' first goal. So a good bit of play in the finish by the Sydney Swans to get their first goal. They trail on the scoreboard there, 1-3, Geelong a 4-2. Well, it was really quite noticeable that uh, Lockett, after this little uh, passage of play, gets up limping. You just can't see it left of screen, but he was limping there as Maxfield, there he is, uh, Lockett in. And he is just not fit at all. So King works his way to the front. Tried to get a kick in. Cook, good hand pass. Well, nearly. Dyson finds its target. The hand pass from him onto Maxfield. Stoneham over the top. King got a lot of courage. Kelly, he's got even more. Kelly goes at goal. Oh. Rush behind over some, the line taken by Graham. There were some desperate pieces of play in that uh, little stanza. What fantastic effort by Steinford. And also Kelly to get to the ball and then a desperate lunge to save the goal. Fantastic ground made up by Steinford to just uh, get Kelly off the football. Graham's kick is consistently past that 50 metre defensive. Colbert receiving from Stoneham. Gives it to Tanner who has just taken the place of Houlihan on the field. Colbert takes it back. He could nearly give it back to Tanner. He's going to get caught here. And eventually handballs away. Still a chance for the Swans. Dale Lewis, well done, no messing around. And away go the Swans. Good play in the finish. Wharf gets it to Kelly. Kelly back onto his right foot. Kicks it high in the direction of Lockett. From behind, the ball spills to the front. You've got to have a shot at it, Stewie, I think. He's kicked it across. There's no one there. It's going to hopefully for the Swans go out in that right forward pocket. When Maxfield may have looked... Perhaps a little too unselfish there. Maybe a screw kick for goal might have been a bit more advantageous. Lewis, big fly, tried to get it to O'Loughlin. Kilpatrick, who's been busy, still paddles the ball in front, intercepting as Stafford. Not too many players going past to take the hand pass. He goes at it himself again, gets it to Maxfield, who caught one and lost the footy. King, likewise, Cook. He ducked just at the right time. Maxfield's kick is high. Stap at a mile in the air. And King, his opponent, takes the mark to get it to McGrath. McGrath from centre half back. A little chip kick. Kilpatrick again. Graham will he bomb it long? He does. Raking drop putt to half forward or centre wing. Pickering, Ruse, Hall. Ruse has got him. Did he have the footy? Hall still plays on. On the shoal. Nicks in the road. Free kick too high. Advantage paid. Now Riccardi. He can kick long. That's a terrific kick. Which way will it bounce? It bounces through for one behind. Kick by the wingman. Come forward. Second behind of the day. 4-3 to 1-4. 27 plays 10. The difference is 17 points. King and Stafford. Stafford. Better judgment. Good hands. Really has developed this man. 
Well, he's lost a little bit of ground. Importantly, they haven't lost the football. Lewis on the end of it. Off one step, lock at the target. One out, duel. No, still can't take mark. It's a hand pass away. Grant! Step it, goal was missed. Maybe he's missed everything, has he? Let's wait here. It might be a behind. And the goal umpire has given him the benefit of the doubt. Each time Tony Lockett gets up, he's quite gingerly, so I'm sure the groin's not right. He's very careful each time he gets, gets up off the ground. Sydney 1-5. 4-3, Geelong. Kent's can't buy a goal at the moment either. Oh, Grant! Close to a throw, Cook. Holding the ball. No. Scotty just, Scotty just mentioned it. The umpires did, in fact, receive a memo during the week to make sure that the player does have a prior opportunity to dispose of the ball before he's pinged for, for too long. So that's what Tanner got told by the umpire. Hocking, who kicked the first goal. Now King. Pickering. Liam Pickering, left centre wing for Geelong. Riccardi. Shaw breaking for him, marking in front of Nix. Against the breeze, you would suggest maybe too far out to score. 65 metres from home. So it goes in short again to Riccardi. Nice gather. Anger is acute. Riccardi at goal. Oh, that's how he's kept it. He has. Geelong's fifth from an impossible angle kicked by Peter Riccardi. His first. It's 5 3 to 1 5. Well, those goals are good because what they are, are they are deliberate goals. They're not snapshots. And when snapshots are goal, it's real luck as to where they're going. But he's slowed down. He's measured it. He realised the player was coming, but he just kept his composure and he slotted that through. That was an excellent goal from a very, very acute angle. Uh, Dipper has some news on the uh, muddy boundary line. What's happening, Dipper? Well, Darren Credible is now back on the boundary line. I can just see him running now. His knee has been uh, popped back in and uh, he seems to be OK now. Amazing recovery. Paul kicked it down. Now Seymour on the ruse from centre-half back. King, good mark. Gee, there's nothing of him, but he lacks nothing in courage. Pretzel. Just wide of the circle. Ruse has moved down the ground for it. Couldn't complete the mark. Stoneham mops up. McGrath. Not much gets past him. Geelong defence right on top today. Riccardi. Ball. In the goal. Kilpatrick says go long, and he does. Hulahan is there, so to his Knicks. And the matter rushing it through for one behind. You know, it was important. Young King, who took the mark from Ruse and then tried to kick it to Paul Ruse, he couldn't take the mark. Pickering took him to the ground, and eventually, when he fell over, Geelong swooped on it and took the ball the length of the ground. Knicks with the football, kicks into the far side, gets good distance. Looking out there for Stafford, about to swoop on it is Rowan Wharf. Handball to Seymour, back over the top to Wharf. In turn, Dyson, out wide Seymour. Not a bad succession of hand passes. Grant, who's unselfish and has got good vision, gives it to O'Loughlin. O'Loughlin kicks it in towards the forward pocket. Quite happy to take it over, Ben Graham. He's taken the point so far. Lock it pretty well. Kickless. He's had three hand passes, Tony Lockett. Stoneham. Too experienced for Kinnear onto Steinford. Steinford's kicked towards centre wing. Marking contest. Grant. That'll be a high tackle on Shoal, you would think. And boys, careful. That could be 50. Could be wrestling too, if you like. The umpire's played the advantage rule. He plays on Shoal. Kicks to the other side of the ground. A flipper, Ruse from Lewis. To Kelly. Paul Kelly outside 50. No one home. One behind, kicked by the skipper. John, why wouldn't that be 50? That, you, that would have been 15 years gone by. Well, as long as they're sure that the fellow that's supposed to be standing on the mark is holding him on the ground. But in that case, Gavin Della probably thought they were both holding one another. But it certainly looked as though the fellow that should have been standing the mark was, uh, was preventing the Geelong players playing on. 22 points the difference. Orchard. 
over the top of Kilpatrick, who takes it out of bounds. What amazes me is the Swans played possessed football last Sunday to thrash Carlton. It's a real and mind still, game now. It's nearly half a game it's, over, they've only been able to I kick know, one goal. I know, it's a real mind game as to what team's up trying to pick form, you just can't do it. Kinnear slaps it down, Maxfield, Dyson who can kick long, long left footer, not bad, he's kicked it. That's their second, close to half time. Well, they certainly needed that one. It gives them a little bit of chance, a little bit of hope. 5-4 to 2-6. Well, there's Gary Hocking's man, Dyson. And there he is getting onto the ball. Gary Hocking, not defensive in a lot of cases. Very attacking player. And there was a little bit of a conjecture as to whether Dyson would play because of work commitments. But he's one of those fellows that goes around his job very quietly, but very effectively. Brendan Sanderson. Kicks a wobbly old punt kick down towards the wing. Kilpatrick sets it up for Hall. Hall along the wing. Kicks into the pocket. Billy. Big Billy Brownless. 50 metres from goal. He's got the football. 5-4 plays 2-6. Liam Pickering's gone off the ground. He was holding his left arm as he went off. Michael Mansfield has come back on. Gone down the forward line for Geelong. So Brownless... Probably too far out to score. He's going to try and kick a score. And he kicks it high into the square. Punched away at the front. McKinnon steps up by McKinnon. Is just offline. Through four, one behind. One goal, one to McKinnon. And the siren imminent. There's Burns, Couch and Pickering on the bench. Presently, the kick in. The siren does sound as Brownless and O'Loughlin go over together. And at half time, Geelong have the advantage. It's a 17 point lead to the Cats. They're 5 5 35. The Swans are 2 6 18. My old man used to tell us you make your own luck. Work hard and never quit. Be grateful and always keep a sense of humour. Always remember who I am and where I came from. I am Lance Franklin Jr. We are Fox Foot. Third quarter from Cadinia Park at its 500th game. Sydney trailing by 17 points, so Lachlan gets dragged through the mud. Very hard to get the ball out of the glue pot, and the umpire's going to come in and bounce it again. Now what's happened now is Paul Kelly has gone down to the forward pocket, being followed by Steinfurt, and Steinfurt's done a terrific job. There they are. So that's now going to be a four-man forward line. Kelly, Lockett, Carey, and also Maxfield. Scholl, who's been busy in the first half. Couch, getting his first touch of the day. Obviously, he's just come on. Shannon Grant to Seymour. Kick comes to half forward. Carey McGrath. Strong again. Cook, courage needed there. And Stodham chips in, just using a little bit of experience. Barry Stodham goes in board with a kick. Sanderson on the end of it to kill Patrick. Kick a bit of an up and under, but it's okay. And the mark taken by Hall. With the breeze at his back, maybe I shouldn't say too far out to score. They're using a new football at the start of each quarter. Brownless got a goal in the first quarter. Kicked a beauty. Ball goes short. That's okay. That's Hoolahan. 5-5 five, five to 2-6. He moves like the old number three, Mark Bairstow. They share an interest in racehorses. He was a former apprentice jockey. Mark Bairstow now trains with success. It's a booming kick. It might be there. It is. It's a goal. Didn't look as though it had the carry in the early part of its trajectory, but uh, the wind certainly helped it along, and the Cats go to 6-5, Sydney 2-6. Well, he was a good player last week against Fremantle, uh, Adam Hulahan. Comes from up around Coral, where his brother played uh, and tried out with uh, Collingwood. He's a player of the future. King carrying the Cats' ruck division with John Barnes on the sideline for many weeks. Riccardi across his shoulder. Oh, that's a great mark to Dunkley. Gee, he read that superbly in front of Brownless. 
had to sit out the first couple of matches owing to a suspension. Now getting back to some of his best form. Picket fence for Dunkley. One kick, one mark, one hand pass and one tackle. Colbert across his body. The bounce beats Brownless and goes through for one behind. So Colbert's first score. 42 now to 18. 6-6 six, six to 2-6 and that's an even four goals. And that's what the difference was at the 10-minute mark of the first quarter when the Cats kicked those four very quick ones. It may prove to be decisive. Grant makes a lead. And the kick goes in that direction. Grant, perhaps he should have taken that, but Orchard on the end of it. Hand passes for Wharf. That was a high tackle, wasn't it, by Mansfield. Now the advantage is with the Swans. Orchard runs away and kicks it straight to the opposition. Bitterscombe's got the football. Right in the middle of Cadinia Park, Craig Bitterscombe. Hand pass away to McGrath. McGrath down the ground. Kicks towards full forward. And the mark is taken by Colbert. Unopposed. And the wheels are starting to fall off for Sydney. Gary Hocking coming off the ground for Geelong. Maybe to be replaced injury. by Pickering. Robert Duke Bidomenico said on the boundary line that he's got a crook shoulder. And here it is. Colbert really jumps on it with nobody in attendance. But uh, Sydney just not handling the ball. The way they came off that half-back line, Orchard turning the ball over. Sign of a team that's not really playing with any confidence. Colbert high, straight to Woodville. Oh, it's a good kick. It's a very good kick by Lee Colbert. He's kicked the goal. So Geelong have got their seventh goal on the scoreboard. They lead by 30 points. Yes, well, uh, Bitterscombe in the centre. Took the chest mark, gave it off. Here it is, the chest mark. They tried to switch a bit of a direction. I don't know why he gave it across to McGrath. I suppose McGrath can go a little wider. Puts it up, as you can see there, Cole, but nobody with him. Cole, but the seventh different Geelong player to score a goal so far today. The Cats increasing their lead to five goals now. Oh, Lachlan. Swans really need a couple just to keep themselves in contention. Maybe this man can inspire them as he can so often. Harness just come on, he's offering a lead, but he's being ignored. That's a big kick by the skipper. Lockett, finally, yes, a mark in the goal square. Kinnear has gone off the ground. I don't know if they've even made it. There. Is that a goal? Yes. That was interesting, wasn't it? He uh, fell down. He tried to kick it as he was yeah, lying that's on the right. ground because there was no one between him and the goal line. Anyway, it's been given a goal. That's all that really matters, but... He almost made a meal of it. Now the mark's there, right? Now he falls forward of the mark. He's definitely forward of the mark there. Kicks the footing. Uh, <laughs> well, he tries to kick the footing. He tries to kick the footing. <laughs> uh, we'll give it to him. Does. Number 31 is Carey for the Swans. Number 26 for Geelong is Stoneham. They will contest the boundary throw in. And Stoneham gets it down. Kicked forward by Couch. Has Holding. the umpire picked a free kick? Holding the man paid off the footy. And it's going to Shannon, Shannon Grant. Grant. Well, he's played a fair game, Shannon Grant. Uh, he's had six kicks and eight hand passes. He did start on the bench. He oh, was look at that. Lock up pretty early. Closer. And the now, free kick down it, 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 it'll be interesting to see which way it goes. It's going against Locker. And it's going to be right down where Grant had the kick. That's right, because the, ball, the free kick is paid where the ball is at the time or where the infringement occurs. See Lockett grabbing on to Graham. Now Graham grabbing, grabbing Lockett, but the umpire's paid the first free kick, so the free kick is paid where the ball was at the time, and then a 50-metre penalty was paid. Well, it's down in the Geelong forward line now, and Bitterscombe has taken the mark. So from a, an error at one end of the ground by the Swans, it is now with Geelong, and Bitterscombe has a chance to score Geelong's eighth goal. They lead presently by 24 points, 7-6 to 3-6. And Bitterscombe can make it 30 points, the difference with this kick. And also become the eighth player to kick a goal. Pretty good kick too. Beautiful kick by Bitterscombe is a goal. He came off the bench, uh, Craig Bitterscombe, in the second quarter because Maxfield was taking uh, McKinnon apart and has done quite well. Now here's Tony Lockett, the infringement, and from this the penalty paid down the ground, the finish up with Bitterscombe. 
who puts through Geelong's eighth goal. And there he is, playing on the wing. Lewis paddles it in front of himself and Colbert. But no support. Houlihan, 20-metre hand pass. Here they come again. Houlihan taking it from Mansfield. Can they set something up? They can to Brownless. Marking in front of Dunkley is a popular figure. It was interesting when the, uh, the legends were introduced, I think the biggest cheers were for Bobby Davis and Gary Ablett. Polly and Polly Farmer. Now he'll kick this. He has kicked the ball over a silo in the past in well, New South Wales. What about the accuracy? That's the uh, problem. Isn't it's it? maybe a bit of a problem, but he'll definitely make the distances. <laughs> no worries. And he become their first multiple goal kicker today. And he hasn't allowed for the wind, and so it's only a behind. One goal, one to bustling Billy. 8-7 now to 3-6. The difference to 31 points. King off the deck, only as far as McGrath, who's been solid. He's made attention there from Arnott. Kicks up towards half forward. Good mark, Pickering. On the hocking, just back on the ground, as Robbo mentioned. Kicks the full forward. McKinnon. Gee, that was class, wasn't it? With a capital C. That's Hawkins, a strong grab. left foot snap. He's normally a right foot kick, and he... Oh, that was just sensational. Look at this. Sensational. Good mark by Marty McKinnon, who kicked the longer goal earlier. Now, that one... Oh, gee, funny old kick off the boot, but it's a goal. Well, that's his second. He was playing as a wingman early and kicked his first goal in the first quarter, running off Maxfield. Now he's playing down in the forward pocket. Pickering has come off the bench. The hand pass over to Hocking. And just look at that. King off for the Swans and O'Brien back onto the ground as the umpire throws it in the air. Carey beaten for it by King of Geelong. Carey gets it back. Dyson's kick smothered, has another crack at it, but the mark has been taken by McGrath. McGrath quickly on to uh, the captain, Stoneham. Stoneham's kick across the centre, and a terrific mark. mark. Well done by young Troy Cook there, and he's got the footy for the Swans on centre wing. Probably uh, conditions not quite suiting, a player of uh, King's type. He gets the ball to half forward, Bitterscombe dispossessed. And in there somewhere is Peter Riccardi. Again brought to ground with the football by Mark Orchard and Dale Lewis. And the umpire will throw it in the air. Right half forward for Sydney. Geelong lead 9-7 to 3-6. So now it is a margin of 37 points. It's getting even more difficult by the minute for the Swans. And that kick forward has been marked by Paul Ruse. Kick coming from Scholl. Ruse is at uh, centre half back. No one really to kick to, so he's going to have to bomb away. Just holds it up and then kicks out towards the wing and a good mark taken by Seymour. Hasn't played such a bad game, Brad Seymour. He's had four kicks, this will be his fifth. Nine hand passes across half back. Kicks in the direction of Stafford. And a big man took a big mark there. He plays on quickly, kicks it across the half forward line. It's going to break down because Scholl got in there to knock the ball away. Arnott's little handball was pretty good for Wharf. He runs on and then kicks long with his right foot straight to the opposition. Kilpatrick in the goal square will mop up for the Cats. Short kick finds McGrath. McGrath in the back pocket. In front of the red chicky stand. A little bit dull here too. Not the footy the weather. Carey. Hunters to the front. Riccardi. Roves it well. Bounces it up towards centre wing. Hawkins tackle and dice it effective. Cook again. Now, man on his own is Colbert. Short of centre wing. Oh, they've split it wide open now. Ruse. Well done, Ruse. Flies a great tackle. Mansfield couldn't recover. Ruse again. Lewis puts his body in. Gets a little push from King. Tries to flip it out. Mansfield shot, won't quite make the distance. Brownless, will he go off the ground? Well done. Hall. Hawking waits for it. Kick the first one. Hall 
Again, tries a ball. Nix has got him, holding the ball, you would reckon. Well, initially it was good play by Brownless to soccer it out, but then Geelong just couldn't get it clear. Good harassment by the Sydney guys. And of course a turnover by a terrific tackle on Derek Hall. Matthew Nix. Looks for Arnott. Got it. He's got it, yeah. I think Lewis might have come over the top of him and spoiled him. He'll go to Lewis anyway. They combine well. Kicks over the head of McGrath. Up towards Kelly. Trying to lift his side. Too much on offer. Ruse has moved downfield to mark in front of Kilpatrick. He does that well, Ruse. Very intelligent run. 70 metres plus from goal. Kick and a half at least. Ten kicks to Paul Ruse. Lock it. Outnumbered again. And Graham takes the mark over the top of him. Yeah, he well, cannot it be, jump. He it will be getting jump. up the nose of Tony Lockett, won't it? Uh, well, it's Graham. really going to test his character. Uh, and, and the Cats will come away from full back. Graham got it to Sanderson. And Sanderson down the ground. Looks out wide there for Couch. But uh, don't mind the look of this young fellow. I think he's growing in stature with every game he plays. And he kicks brilliantly to half forward. Kelly had spent it before he actually took hold of it. Gathered by Seymour, he's tackled and defensively done well there by Bitterscombe. Gives the hand pass away. Steinford run down but got his kick away. Nix is there in front, stood his ground. Knew he was going to get crunched by Stoneham it was. And eventually the ball falling to Pickering. Pickering's kicked to half forward. Good contest but keeping his footing there was Houlihan. Handball to Colbert. Colbert Too rather smart. a little laconically to Houlihan. Tackle. Tried to get it down to Colbert again as he kept it in. No, he hasn't. Over the top, aren't it? Well, Patrick, he just keeps getting the footy. 17 times he's had it, Pete. McKinnon, pretty good stats for uh, a day like today. Arnott to half forward. Now Sydney with the numbers. Can Carey manufacture something here? Lockett says go goalwards, and he does. Need to be a good bounce, but it's not. He's a very impressive mover, Carey, for his size. The final quarter gets underway. Sydney with the job ahead. Not an impossible task for the Swannies if they're good enough, aren't it? But they certainly would have to lift their work rate. Cook across his body up towards half forward. Marking contest. Riccardi a chance. Kelly beats him to it. Still he goes, the skipper. A long bomb in towards full forward. Almost a great mark to Kinnear. Couldn't drag it and he's playing it full forward with Lockett off the ground. Graham. Bombs it back out towards the member side here at Cadinia Park and the ball hustled over the line in front of Crook. We will see a throw in. King does the ruck work, loses out to Stafford. Kick away from Pickering. Up to the midfield yes, area. He's not a bad young player, is he? Hurl the hand. Hurl the hand gets it moving quickly. A ball was his target. Crook's nearly got him. Back to Kilpatrick. Spoken about his exploits today. He's been pretty busy. Bitterscombe. Takes the punch away, Seymour intercepting, Ruse. Lobs it high, marking contest on centre wing. King in front, couldn't bring it down. Now Maxfield gets the opportunity. Not too much on offer for him, the skipper makes a lead. Takes it just inside the boundary Good line, running, Maxfield. Maxfield. Breaks for him, ball doesn't bounce for him though, needs to pick it up now. He's run himself into the pocket, has a uh, snap at goal, it's not bad. What's the goal on going to say? It's there. Well, that's his second, and it was excellent running because Maxfield was on centre wing at one contest, ran onto the ball after Kelly. Here's Kelly now. Maxfield was working down the ground, ran forward. Just couldn't quite pick it up, but it finally does and slot through his second goal. That was excellent play. Michael O'Loughlin leaves it behind. Cook. Tries to get it to O'Loughlin, Kilpatrick, Hall and then Tanner. The Cats go into attack towards the full forward area. Chance for Billy. Well done, Paul Ruse. Well done, Stephen Carey. Gives it away to Tanner. Back to Hall. Back to Tanner. Going to get run down. Gives away a bit of ground, Kilpatrick. Kick a little ordinary. But McGrath has come all the way down from centre-half back. McGrath goes for goal, and it's touched right on the line. Great McGrath. It's good to see half-back is running down the ground. Accuracy wasn't a problem, just touched on the line. Rodney E just looking uh, a little frustrated, I'm sure. 
It's been difficult for he and Gary Ayres. Just no flow in the game right from the start. Although Geelong did kick four quick goals in the first ten minutes. And that's going to be the margin, I would think, between the two teams. Mansfield has the football. Kicks across the half-forward line. Getting back was Maxfield, but not able to stop Derek Hall from marking. 52 metres from goal. Take a good kick to score from there. Reasonable possessions. Short passes all right. And Tanner has marked. Not much closer to goal, really, when he takes his kick. Grant Tanner. 14 and a half minutes left. 62 plays, 31. Geelong lead. It is a battle between fourth-placed Geelong and the Swans, who are presently eighth. And you can see there what is confronting Grant Tanner. He gets it onto the boot pretty nicely, kicks it all the way to the line. It's come off the boot, and the ball. Might be a goal to haul. Well, it was just so laconically done in the finish that I'm sure it came to the surprise of a lot of the Swans people. 10-8 plays 4-7. Well, Tanner just put it up, hoping. And here it is. Good camera shot, that. Look at the ball. Starts right, goes left. There she comes to ground, and there's Hall off the ground. And that might be just the one that has broken the back at the Sydney Swans with 14 minutes left. That's what they didn't need. Stafford. Lewis bombs it long up towards full forward Kinnear couldn't complete the mark Riccardi a little kick to kill Patrick Cat's still full of running Tanner just only a couple of games last year Grant Tanner up the half forward Michael Mansfield now Sydney starting to look just a little bit oh, quick horse by himself on left Derek Hall again in front of Seymour. Well worked. Well worked. Little slow getting it down to Hall. And Hall well within kicking range. He's already kicked the one. Very serviceable player. He can play at both ends of the ground. And effectively at both ends of the ground too. Derek Hall from just on the 50 metre line now. He comes inside it for his kick. No mark taken. Hawking has a ping at the goal, and he's got it. Eleven eight to four seven, and that was almost the identical spot. Yes, and also a replay of their previous goal. Again, Hall just putting it up high. It just doesn't carry. Ball to ground, and there's Hawking. Just fortunately to, to be in the right place. Orchard, away to Wharf, over the top, Maxfield, gets passed, well done but Stuart Maxfield, just a little errant with his hand pass, Cook, out wide, Carey, go in and get a goal for the Swans, Stefan Carey from 40 metres out, kicks for goal, and misses off to the left, Carey three behinds, he's kicked, he's a real prospect Carey, a real prospect. Nice little sidestep by the Morris medalists of a few years back now. Lewis almost a mark. He's claiming the mark, in fact. In front of Tanner. Lewis right half back. Orchard's gone in short for him. He's decided to ignore him. Plenty of Sydney supporters here. Saw the attendance before, 22,000. They would have been a little bit disappointed with the side's effort today. Kelly over the top, but Bruce in front two of their better players again this afternoon. Ruse with 14 possessions and Kelly with 15, Pete. Yes, yeah. thanks for that, Robbo. Sort of backs up what I was saying. They have tried hard, but weight of numbers against them. Lewis to Arnott. Back to Lewis. Haven't really gained much. Kicks over the head of Tanner. Colbert on O'Loughlin. It's out of bounds on centre wing. Scoreboard here at Cadinia Park. 11-9 to 4-8. So not a day that Sydney fans will want to remember. And as Don mentioned, they've got a tough one coming up at Football Park. Darren Creswell's been a big loss. 
with that uh, knee injury. Not quite sure how long that's going to keep him out. Because he's been really one of their prime movers this year. Bitterscott put his backside in. That was effective. Artits kick. Maxfield. And they get some run out of this movement. Lewis. McGrath. Run. That's like running into a brick wall. Back to Maxfield again. Long left footer. No one home again. Over the head of Tanner. Won't matter. That's a oh, goal. That's a great kick. That's his third. That was just an excellent kick. His third goal, as Peter's already said. He really did look back and laid back on that ball. He lined it up. There was just nothing offering. And here he is. Look, he started down half back. Runs on. That's from 50, oh, 52 metres out. That is an excellent effort. Well done. He's tried very, very hard today playing on the wing. And it is a 37-point lead at the moment to Geelong. Lewis, handball back towards the middle of the ground. It just bogs down there. Carey does well. Gets it to O'Brien. Maxfield will get his fourth goal here. No, he unselfishly goes into the pocket and passes to O'Loughlin. He could nearly kick it himself, Michael O'Loughlin. And he does it nicely too. Just sets it up. The breeze pulls it around. And it is a goal to Michael O'Loughlin and the Swans. Well, First again, goal of the game to O'Loughlin. And again, Maxwell being involved on that occasion going short. Adding a little bit of respectability to the score, Sydney, but the game's well over. It was well over just after half time. They do switch the ball well. Here's Kerry once again. See how they go across the switch. And Bitterscombe taken off the ground because he couldn't run with Maxfield. Well, that time it was uh, Shoal. Not a day that the Swans will prefer to remember. Hall, Kilpatrick, Carey, Ruse. Ruse, a little chip shot. Only as far as McGrath, another turnover. McGrath kicks up towards half forward. The mark is taken by Scholl. Scholl plays on quickly, hooks it across his left shoulder, in towards set half forward. And if that's not a mark, it's certainly a free kick to Adam Houlihan. Andrew Dunkley, just a fraction of a second arriving late. So Houlihan with the football. He really did have to stand his ground. Anybody who's played football knows what that feels like. With Dunkley bearing down, he had to stand his ground. He finished up with a free kick anyway. He would have taken the mark. Reasonable stats there for Adam Houlihan. 15 possessions. He did well last week too. He's a very impressive youngster. So we have a look now at uh, what is confronting Adam Houlihan from about 45 metres. Gee, he gets onto it, gets good distance, but off to the right and through for one behind. Lewis, little kick, well done. Kings on the end of that. He's on centre wing. His kick will land at centre half forward for Sydney. From behind, Stafford provides a good contest with Graham. Graham gets it back. Then handballs forward to his own advantage. Riccardi gets it back to Bitterscombe. Bitterscombe off the side of his boot. Colbert has recovered from that clash with Bitterscombe. Three bounces to Lee Colbert. He approaches half forward and then kicks in towards full forward. At the back was Brownless, knocked away by Dunkley to the boundary line. Whoa, says the crowd. And Andrew Dunkley, with his heart in his mouth, will watch the boundary umpire throw it in. The reason that one can't be paid, Robbo, is simply because he had teammates between him and the boundary line, so the umpire would have given him the benefit of the doubt and said, well, maybe he was trying to hit it onto a teammate. We know he wasn't, but he's got to give him the benefit of the doubt. Carey and Brownless, Lewis over the top. Seymour to Dunkley. Dunkley this time a kick. Kelly on the end of it. Hit him on the chest. Could still mark. Now he can't. McGrath pops up. Low trajectory pass. Two of them were there. And it's McKinnon underneath. Yes, it is. He got stood on. They both led out for that one. Neither could take the mark. The so ball up. 40 metres from goal. Hulahan tried to go off the ground. Ruse tries to pick it up on the siren. And the battle between the two Hawthorne coaches has seen ex-Hawthorne coaches Gary Ayres emerge victorious. 11-10, 76, Sydney, 6-8, 44.